Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 7 of introductory Python for image processing series. And in the previous tutorial, we looked at all the different packages that got installed as part of our Anaconda installation. And in fact, we installed Anaconda because we wanted to work with Python. And uh, it installed three or four different packages and we looked at them uh, the last time, including Anaconda Navigator, which is just a dashboard uh, where you can find spy, uh, shortcut links to Spider, Jupyter, and so on. And uh, the couple of other things that it installed was uh, Anaconda PowerShell prompt and Anax Anaconda prompt. These are the DOS looking windows where you can type little snippets of code uh, and execute Python uh, from within that DOS window. And uh, the other one we looked at was Jupyter Notebooks. Again, this was uh, where you can actually type like chunks of uh, paragraphs of uh, text describing uh, your code, and then you can write your code and then uh, your text and code and so on. So it's great for uh, uh, training purposes, of course. And finally, we looked at uh, Spider IDE and we said, okay, let's actually look at that uh, in this tutorial. That's exactly what we're gonna do it uh, right now. So IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Again, it may sound a bit intimidating or fancy, but all it is is basically, hey, we have everything that you need for your coding purposes, you know, within this one environment. That's what IDE stands for. So let's go ahead and fire up Spider and uh, quickly get an overview and get familiar with uh, various, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's user interface. Now, how do you fire it up? Well, find your Anaconda installation folder and just click on the Spider shortcut. Although you can also open Navigator and click on the spider from within there, but it's two clicks. Why do that? So when you open it, it looks uh, pretty much like this. And again, I have a new file that's called tutorial7.py, pi, okay? And this is where on the left-hand side is where I'm going to type my code. A equals to three, B equals to five, for example. This is where, and then I can save it, okay? This is where, uh, and, and it saves it as a .py file. And in fact, if I open this .py file right there, let's open it in Notepad, okay? So here is our Notepad and uh, let me find my, oh, this is, Notepad is too big. Okay, and when I drag this tutorial seven here, you see this is just a bunch of lines of code. Uh, you know, uh, this is just a text file with an extension of .py. So that's the left-hand side. Now, if I run this, for example, if I just say print A plus B, okay? If I run this, and how do I run it? By clicking this green button. The green button stands for run file, meaning run everything, this entire file. So when I run it, the result is displayed on the right-hand side, and it's called console here, okay? And we are using IPython console, which is nothing but, if you remember this from my previous tutorial, this anaconda prompt okay think of it as anaconda prompt showing up on this side right here which also means i can just do my c equals to four d equals to let's say six and then c plus d there you go okay so you can type little snippets of code here or you can type a whole bunch of your code on the left hand side obviously if i'm testing something do i have this library or how does this work then I'm going to do it on the right-hand side. But typically, I spend most of my time writing code on the left-hand side and save it as a text file or save it as a .py file. Okay, so uh, now let's look at the top right-hand side, okay? Right now, it's showing help. Well, of course, you can go ahead and look at the help uh, and click on the next tab, File Explorer, as the name suggests. This is just a file explorer, so you can actually look at all the files in this current working directory, or you can just open up you know, different directories and uh, have a quick look at what files you have, and you can open them. Most of the time, I actually have variable explorer open up here, so I can actually see what variables are in my code, and are the values assigned uh, making sense, or did I make some sort of a mistake? As you can see, we have A and B defined as part of my code here, and A and B, they got values of three and five, right? Like we defined here, because we executed the code. Every time you execute the code, it saves the variables in the variable explorer, so I can quickly get a look at variable explorer, uh, 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 look at my variables. Now on the bottom here, I also experimented with C and D, and those values also are showing up here. So think of this as, 
uh, all of these values are stored in the memory and here it's giving me a snapshot. So if I rewrite, for example, even though my B says five over there, if I just say B e equals to, I don't know, 1.5, the B got updated in the variable explorer with a value of 1.5 because I haven't, uh, I mean, I, uh, uh, that's what the latest value is in the memory. But if I run this code on the left hand side one more time, you see my B got updated. So this kind of tells me, is there a mistake with my variables? And variable is again, uh, we are assigning a bunch of numbers or something or a string or something to a variable so it's easy for us to call, right? If you remember in the previous tutorial, I said my image is equal to, I don't know, uh, five, okay? Uh, where did I type that? Sorry, I typed it at completely at the wrong location. Okay, so let's go back to b equals to five in the bottom right hand side. If I say my image equals to five, okay, so this is a variable. So my variable image has a value of five and that is an integer. And if you see again, um, let's just say my image two equals to 1.2. Now my image two is has a value of 1.2 and it is a floating point number and it has only size of one. What does size mean? Well, in reality, our images are two dimensions, right? So which is, which means it's actually a list. Let's actually do a one dimension list. So let's say these are the values for my pixels. Okay, now you see my image is a list with a, with, uh, a size of five and these are the values. You can double click and open it if you want and it shows you exactly, okay? at zero index zero one two three four i have values of one two five eight and nine so this is a one dimensional image if it's a two dimensional image you have a two dimensional array okay so you can even define i don't want to get into the details yet but hopefully you got an idea of what spider is now you can erase the memory we can shake it off we can erase the memory just by clicking this button over there remove all variables then it removes everything so if i just type image here it says what do you mean image is not defined okay now if i define my image equals to i don't know four now if i type image it tells me my image is four because it's in the memory up there okay so you can see how various things come together and this is why this is called integrated development environment you have a place where you can develop your code you can test your code i mean you can look at the output you can look at the variables you can do a lot more you can debug your code meaning you're not getting the right results for example i mean some some uh, issues with coding is easy right there it says hey name image is not defined oh yeah i'll go back and redefine it because i know the error but some you get wrong values how do you debug that? So you kind of create certain points in your code where you can execute until that point and see if you're getting the right results. Okay, now go next and now go next. Ah, here is where the mistake is. So for that, uh, you can actually use these debug tools up here, but let's not worry about it, at least for the next 25 tutorial videos. After that, maybe, but for the next 25 tutorials, let's not worry about these the ones in blue. The ones in green, you probably saw me run this. The green uh, is the run file, run everything. And the two common ones I use is the green one and this one. It says run selection or current line. What that means is if I just say my, uh, I don't know, image five has a value of 221, 56, 72, I don't know. So this is, and if I want to run only this line, I can just click on that and run that line. Okay, so these are the two common ones I, I uh, use. And again, there is a lot more to this uh, uh, IDE. If you want, you can go to uh, tools and preferences. You can change this to dark mode if you like to work in the dark mode. If you uh, uh, if you want to uh, assign certain keyboard shortcuts, you can always do that and so on. So there's a lot more if you want to dig into it. But I think this gives us a good enough start so we can get into actually writing some code starting again the next tutorial. So in the next tutorial, let's actually understand what libraries are because we don't want to write code for every task. Someone already did that. So let's go ahead and import it and just execute whatever they did and customize it for our purposes, okay? And this is these are called libraries. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna explain the concept of libraries and how to install them if you already do not have them, okay? So thank you very much and uh, let's continue this in the next tutorial.